Jack here at JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. This is Guitar Gear and Beer, where I take a piece of gear, or gears as we have today, while simultaneously reviewing a beer that I've never had before. The gear in question is the Digitech Bad Monkey, which is an overdrive pedal, and the Behringer Tube Overdrive, which as you can probably tell from the name, is also an overdrive pedal. These are essentially like a cheap Tube Screamer type clones. If you just want the sound clips of them, there'll be a card up there. The beer that I've got is the Daft Monk Belgian Double with Figs, I suspect it's a kind of dark Belgian beer, but we'll get into that a wee bit later on. So as a kind of disclaimer thing here, I more or less gave up on tone chasing or trying to find the perfect sound or the perfect overdrive quite a few years ago, partly because I realised it wasn't going to happen, and then my perception of what is a great tone would also shift. So when I got close to it, I'd start to hear something, another frequency I didn't like, or a frequency I wanted more of, or some sort of different texture. So I kind of just gave up on it, and I was like, if I get something that sounds okay for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. So having said that, I have gigged with both of these pedals, although it's been quite a few years since I've played live with the Behringer Tube Overdrive. Bad Monkey's been on my pedal board for the last four or five years, it's just kind of there now. So with that in mind, I'm going to start off with that one. I tend to use it live uh, for a bit more beef and a bit more kind of guts, so I'll tend to have a slightly driven sound anyway, so I can kind of play a bit harder, get a nice ACDC, maybe a bit heavier than that kind of sound. Roll the volume and the tone down if I want to clean things up and then I'm not kind of changing channels, I, I just seem to prefer that. So what I generally do with this is set everything about 6, so, you know, oh actually volume low and high, maybe about 6 on the game, maybe just about kind of 3 or something like that. Sometimes taking down the low because it's a bit woofy at times. And that'll just give me like a bit more oomph, a bit more kind of guts. So a, a criticism I have of this pedal is that I don't totally like the the low and the high, how they actually sound, how they kind of affect the EQ. But at the same time, it does make it cut really quite well in a mix, so it's a trade-off that I'm, I'm happy enough to make. I wouldn't, probably wouldn't use this as just like a drive pedal on a clean amp, because I, I don't particularly like the drive by itself, but in conjunction with an already driven sound, it can just add a bit more beef. In particular, they are quite good for doing lead tones. So my approach to live playing is that it can be a bit more rock and roll, a bit more rough around the edges, because I think that really helps kind of convey that energy a bit more. So that's where this is really good for me. And instead that I probably wouldn't use it in a kind of studio or home recording or for a demo or something like that. I'd probably want the sound to be a little bit more pristine. This does kind of, for me, start to veer into slightly grungy territory. So the only other thing I think to mention is that it's got a mixer output here. So if you had some sort of disaster and your amp wasn't working, you could technically take it out into the mixing desk, although I don't think the tone would be particularly convincing. So that's more or less that pedal. At this point, I'm going to open up my beer. And a secret bonus tip, if you don't have a bottle opener handy, simply use the one on your Swiss Army knife. I've got about three of these in the house and I've got no idea why. clip as you probably gather the reference tone was just totally clean and then I added in some bad monkey over the top just so you can get an idea of how it affects a kind of a totally clean signal. So this uh, beer here it's not got much of a head it's a kind of like a lighty brown almost a kind of reddish color very kind of uh, fruity quite kind of sweet smelling thing which makes sense because it did say it's made with figs so here we go It's a bit like a, a kind of slightly sweet but watery stout so far. I've got some in the glass, some in the bottle, so I'll switch between them and kind of get a verdict as to which tastes better from there as well.
there, as you can probably guess, I did the same with the tube overdrive as I did with the bad monkey there. Total clean sound, so you can get an idea of how that's colouring the tone. Okay, so this beer's got quite a kind of initial kind of sharp, it almost kind of like fizzy quality to it that you get on the kind of tip of your tongue as it starts off, maybe the, the front of the roof of your mouth as well. Then when you swallow it, you get a kind of more traditional beery taste, and there's a real aftertaste of uh, kind of like a really kind of a, a, a dark aroma, like that kind of coffee chocolate thing you can get from beers. So it's quite a quite a contrast from the first sip to how it settles. It's quite quite a bitter aftertaste as well, maybe a bit more bitter than what I would like. Um, it says on the bottle here, just for a bit more information for you, dark fruit and delicate spice notes. So I'm not really getting any of the spice, but that might be that kind of sharpness at the start I'm detecting. And then it's talking about yeast. Oh, dark sugar. Okay, so that would make sense, because there is this kind of sweet... That would be that kind of coffee, like, well, toffee flavour, I suppose, that would be more apt of describing it. Flavour that I was getting there. Balanced with the fig juice, so that would be the aforementioned kind of fruitiness. And I suppose figs are quite a kind of dark sweetness as well. Which, you know, if, if you handed this to me and said it's made with figs, I would I would believe you, because it does... If you imagine figs being sort of put into a, a double beer, that's probably more or less what you're getting here. And then uh, an adequate bitterness, which it says. I'd say perhaps slightly more bitterness than what I'd like. We'll have to take my time with this one Compressor due to the bitterness more factor. More kind of boost, because it helps bring things up and level things out. You don't have to worry about playing quite as accurately. Uh, the other thing I'll sometimes do is use an EQ after everything as, as a boost, maybe around the 800 kind of knock off some of the lows, knock off some of the highs. I might do more on that in another video, I don't want to get too sidetracked for this time being. Now while this did produce a fairly nice lead tone, it always had a slightly hollow sound to it. Um, I, I did quite like that about it, that you could roll the tone down so it's a bit less bright, go on your neck, pick up and get quite in a kind of nice... A nice smooth hollow sound. You could add in more treble, but uh, back in those days I preferred a much creamier lead tone than probably I do now. Having realised that when you add in the, the, the high end it does help it cut through and makes a little bit more. You know that there's a tone control high end where it's a little bit sharper. So it, it works as a boost, but it's it, it doesn't boost the volume that much either. So that's why I would say that even when you've got the level more or less dimed, it's not going to make things hugely louder because it's an over it's not actually a boost it's an overdrive pedal that's just i was using using it as a kind of game stacking thing and like some overdrive pedals what this one does is it mixes through some of the dry signal so while you're playing what comes out of the pedal will be the distorted signal but it'll also keep some of the, uh, the clean in as well with no gain on it whatsoever which can be good but if you're playing into a totally clean amp if you don't have a compressor or anything before it and you dig in you might get this weird kind of clean sound coming through the amp which can sound a bit odd. You might have picked up on some of that in the clip that I did of it. I picked up quite a few Behringer pedals over the years mainly because they're cheap and I thought well I'll throw 30 quid at it and if I don't like it I can maybe sell it on and it's not that big a deal. I have ended up keeping all of them because they've normally been like fairly useful. And the plastic construction has never really bothered me. There's something weird with this one uh, where you need to give it a good stomp to turn it on so I can't remember if it's something to do with the spring or you know the little kind of rubber bit that actually pushes the, the button to turn it on, but I did have some sort of small issue with that. It was nothing huge, but just if I'm using it, I need to make sure I give it a good stomp so it actually comes on. Uh, back to the beer, I'm actually preferring it out of the bottle than I was out of the glass, which is weird for me because normally I prefer the way the, the glass kind of opens up the flavour, but there's something about having the in, in kind of intense dark flavours of it like funneled into your mouth from the bottle that seems to sort of improve it ever so slightly. But that might just be because I've had a bit more of it and I'm getting a bit more used to it. I'm still not a huge fan of it though, I have to say. I'll finish, I'll, I'll finish it for the sake of the video. So as you can see here, both of these displayed. I'm going to talk about them and compare them together in my no expenses spared set here, which is in fact a music stand covered with a disposable tablecloth. So yeah, um, I mean, there's, there's not a, an awful lot in it between them. They are fairly similar pedals. The Bad Monkey will give you a lot more volume if you're looking for a boost than the Tube Overdrive. Like, if, if you got the level set full here and the level set full here, there's not too much in it. But as soon as you start to adjust the high and low things here, they must be... My, my guess is there's some sort of um, preamp on it and it's actually boosting these frequencies. Because, you know, like a tone pot, I think that's what this is really. It's just either letting the highs come through are cutting them off, whereas it feels like these, well it sounds like it as well, that these are actually boosting frequencies rather than just um, taking them, you know, rather than the tone pot, that's the only way I can describe it. It's, yeah, 
So the, the basically uh, a tone pot on a guitar, you're not really changing the, the volume as such, you're changing how much high is going out. Where the volume, you are changing it, and that's very much what these feel like. They feel like volumes are adding into it, whereas the tone pot is more kind of shaping it. Just to be controversial here, I'm not actually a huge fan of either of these pedals. They do what they do, and they do their job well enough, but it's never something that I'm particularly blown away with. But as I say, what this one does is add that kind of nice rock and roll filth factor, which I think translates well at a gig. So it serves its purpose well, but its purpose is very kind of niche for what I'd use it for. I mean, other people might have other uses for them. This is the thing to remember. This is just my experience with gigging them, and that's how I'm trying to share how I've used them. Having said that, I'm pretty much down with both of them as a lead boost. If you checked out the sound clip that I'd kind of put up in the card earlier, I really quite like the tone I managed to get out of both of them with to be honest, quite little gain. Like, you could have it full or you could have it pretty low, and I just, look, I quite like the kind of fatness to it and the overall sound. The final thing to consider here is really the cost. There was a time when you could pick up both of these pedals for about £60, and I imagine you could still do that on the second-hand market. I think both of these have actually been discontinued, so this is how out of the loop of uh, new pedals I am. But to put the price in context, £60 is about, what, the same as a, a Tube Screamer Mini, or maybe just under half of like a, a Tube Screamer. And then significantly less than your, your vintage Tube Screamers as well, I imagine this will be much more. Which to be fair, is a classic pedal and is probably quantifiably much superior to these. Not to say they're bad, but I think they know their place in the hierarchy of pedals. I kind of, on this note of value for money, I had thought about maybe taking £60 and seeing how many pedals I could actually get for it and seeing if they're any good, so looking at the kind of low-end Digitech ones, you know, second-hand ones, maybe Behringer, and I've not tried down any of the Yoho pedals yet, so I'm kind of thinking about doing that, so let me know if that's something you'd be uh, interested in, a, a, a budget pedal shootout or something like that. But yeah, to, to wrap everything up, I mean, these, these are both decent. If you're looking for an overdrive, this may, is maybe worth checking them out. If you guys have got any experience using them, or if there's a, a cheap overdrive you think I should look at, you know, let, let me know in those comments. This beer, again, I'm not totally taken by it. It does say on the bottle that it goes very well with cheese, and I imagine it would. So if I had a cheese board here, I think I would be enjoying it more. But then if I introduce the cheese board, that's just cheating, because then I can complement any beer or any drink with, with food. And then this is becoming way too off track, as it already is now. But if you like Belgian beers, you like Belgian doubles, and you're looking for one with a kind of a initial kind of quite sharp, I wouldn't say spicy taste, but definitely kind of sharp and fizzy. These kind of like... Um, fruity undertones, and then a very kind of rich, uh, bitter aftertaste. If that sounds up to your street, then the uh, Daft Monk Belgian Double with Figs is definitely worth checking out. But yeah, this has been Guitar Gear and Beer. At the moment, I'm kind of going through the old gear that I've had for quite a while, and I've got some sort of fairly solid opinions on. I have recently bought a whole new whack of gear, so I'm kind of getting to grips with that. I'm building my opinions on them so I can present it in a slightly more... Uh, I don't want to say knowledgeable way, but like opinionated way, then oh, this is a new piece of gear and this sounds okay sort of thing. I want to live with them for a bit and get used to the sounds and then kind of present it that way. But yeah, if you've got any uh, gear you think I should check out or any beer you think I should check out, probably more interested in the beer just from a, f a purely budget point of view, <laughs> uh, give me a shout in the comments. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, check out the playlist, which I think I'll put there. If you just want sound clips, check out this. And yeah, share, like, comment, uh, subscribe, and enable notifications with that little bell on the side. If you feel so inclined, cheers guys.